She was a gifted musician who played for the symphony orchestra at the age of 12, a talented actress and also a one-time pioneering female rally car driver. But her name is now synonymous with English speech and drama across the country, carving a name as one of Sri Lanka's most beloved and influential teachers in a career spanning decades, ETV Power Women proudly presents Wendy Holsinger. Hi, and welcome to ETV Power Women. Um, now, today with us, we've got a very special guest. Uh, you've heard the introduction already, but she's probably known, most widely known, as one of Sri Lanka's foremost teachers of English and drama and theatre. Um, hi, and, and welcome to the show. Hi, Lily. Hi, how are you? It's good to be here. <laughs> well, thank you for being on and um, taking some time off from your busy schedule. I wanted to just kind of jump straight into it and ask you, because you know, I've been reading about you and you've just led this fascinating life um, from the time you were eight months old, you know, I think that's when your sort of career in sort of theatre started. <laughs> just talk us through a little bit about your childhood and how you got to, to where you are today. Okay. Uh, well, uh, now you mentioned eight months old at the yes. theatre. Uh. This is because my mother was uh, producing a play yeah. and she needed a baby in the play. And everyone looked around and said, uh, well, from where are we going to get a baby? <laughs> and she said, I've got one at home. <laughs> and so at eight months, I came on stage and my eye was in the wings with my bottle and my nappies. Okay. That was my introduction. And I have uh, been involved yeah. uh, with speech and drama. I would say from really from the age of four, because that's when my mother started teaching me. Right. And uh, I think I did my first uh, Trinity College London exam when I was four and from then onwards it was a case of one aunt wanting to teach me art yeah the, the, my mother's um, sister who was the artist yeah. uh, at age seven I started playing cello yes uh, which is incredible I mean <laughs> because my aunt uh, was a cellist yes yeah. and uh, well, she thought that I would be a very good cellist and my mother encouraged all these things yeah and uh, school life was wonderful yeah. because, uh, you know, I, I started off at Bishop's College in the nursery. Yeah. But there was this boy who insisted on rolling me in the sand pit. <laughs> and, As they do. <laughs> uh, and I objected wildly to being rolled in the sand pit. I hope you whacked him. <laughs> <laughs> or didn't. And then from uh, there, after my father died when I was five. Yeah. Um, I was very sad and the doctor recommended a complete change of environment. Right. So I was sent to live with my grandparents in Mathura. Okay. And I was there for two years and attended oh, the Mathura St. Mary's convent. Yeah. Came back to Holy Family when I was eight years old and continued there till the end of my school days. Yeah. Uh, right along, my lessons never stopped. Yeah. I, I went ahead with my drama, with my music, with uh, dancing, yeah, wow. uh, singing, because I needed to have a second instrument. Yeah, uh, because uh, my idea was that I was going to be a professional cellist. Yes, that's right. Yeah, and and uh, my mother said, "Oh, yes, yes, you know, you can go ahead and do all this, but remember that eventually you will take over the school." <laughs> and uh, uh, just life went on, you know, yeah. uh, with uh, exams and a lot of uh, schoolwork. Yeah. And then at the age of 16, uh, she suddenly told me, it was December, and she said, in January, you will start teaching. Wow. And I said, uh, what do you want me to teach? Yeah. And she said, you teach what I have taught you. And she had organized 20 students. Yeah. And so from the age of 16, I, have begun, I, I began to teach. That's amazing, at 16. At 16, I think my, my, old, my pupils were 12 or 13. Wow. And Was that nerve-wracking for you, your first class? Did you yes. think, oh, 
Yes, <laughs> I was. It was yeah. because uh, my mother sat on the other side of the, okay, the curtain. So, wow. There was a curtain dividing yeah. my classroom. And uh, she sat on the other side and every time I made a mistake, yeah. she bounced out and she said, that's wrong. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, the, the main thing was, I think, that she just taught me discipline. Yeah. And what it was like to have to prepare for the lessons. Yeah. And uh, she made quite sure that I prepared for the next uh, yeah. class that came in and uh, a stickler for time. Which is a wonderful thing. Yes, I, I still yeah. am. I, yeah. I'm 10 minutes early for any interview. Yeah. And well, from there, then I started working on my diploma yeah. for speech and drama, as well as by the time I was 20, no, sorry, I've jumped the gun. By the time I was 17, yeah. I had done my licentiate for the Royal Schools in London. Okay. I had done my licentiate for the Trinity College of London. Wow. And then, of course, I got married. Yes, yeah. And um, produced a baby by the time I was 20. <laughs> and uh, I got my fellowship two months after, after the baby was born. Oh my goodness. I also taught cello. Yes. And you joined the, the symphony orchestra, right? At, uh, at symphony 20? orchestra, yeah. I joined when I was 12 years old. I had been a member of that uh, for the past so many years. Yeah. Um, now I don't play anymore because okay. Practices are on a Sunday morning and I need my space now. Yeah, one well, needs a little bit of time off because, I mean, yes. the school, you know, yes. the school has grown so much in the sense that you've got sort of branches of the school island-wide virtually. Yes. I mean, how that must, you know, be a wonderful thing, knowing that you're taking this to children across the yes. island. Uh, must I, think th I think the greatest satisfaction is when uh, I travel in yeah. Colombo, children sometimes take uh, English, yeah. drama, speech, good, good speech for granted. Right, yeah. Uh, especially children from the private schools. Yeah. But when you go into the outstations and you see the effort that, that they, they put, put in, in yeah. and uh, the keenness of the parents that their to children see that learn. their children learn this language, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a very humble experience yeah. for me to ha have people come up to me and say thank you. Uh, for training these teachers, and I train all my teachers. Right. Okay. Yeah. In the out, any teacher who's on our staff has Comes. a teaching diploma. Yeah. Which is. Uh, I don't want them to, you know, go out half baked. Yeah. Absolutely. They, because they then need, it just. They need yeah. to know what they're doing. Yeah. And I'm quite tough on that. Which is a wonderful thing. I think it's a necessary thing. Because yes. Uh, yeah. We have uh, teachers now all over the island, and I think now it is my dream to. Uh, try and push out to Jaffna. It's, it's a wonderful thing actually to be able to to help children develop and progress and then you know take it to the next level for them. I'm really thrilled that uh, I see the appreciation yeah. of well, I mean okay the parents in Colombo also yeah. uh, they love it when they see children progressing yeah. and for me it's a personal satisfaction when I take on a pupil yeah. who's let's say mediocre Right. And I see the effort that they develop. put in and I yeah. see the development. I'm thrilled. Yeah. What, build what speech and drama gives them most of all is the confidence and especially because, uh, you know, when we teach them to improvise. Yeah. And it takes them so far in job interviews. Right. And they have the confidence because they have the vocabulary. Yeah. They know that they are speaking properly. I mean, you don't need to uh, have an accent. Yeah, but just so long as you can make your, your pronunciation you know, yeah. is good, yeah. your syllabic stresses are correct, yeah. and um, I pay a lot of attention to the vocal techniques. Right. Okay. By vocal techniques, what do you mean exactly? Breathing. Okay. Uh, projection, right. resonance. Okay. Your articulation. Okay. Uh, uh, all of those. Yeah. All, all that comes into a vocal technique. Yeah. Uh, what I do find uh, they find difficult is. When I say, right, let's do some acting now. Uh -huh. And then they all shrivel into their shells. Really, they're all shy. Oh, oh kind of, yes. <sighs> and they become shy and withdrawn. Yeah. And I say, look, life is acting. Yeah. I say, <laughs> if you don't want to go to school. Uh, <laughs> Put and on a performance and, and instead. And you pretend <laughs> you have a toothache or fever. Yeah. I said, you're pretending. And mm. I said, do that. So... Um, when I point little things out like yeah. that, it becomes that much easier. Well, 
we're going to take a little break, but don't go anywhere because we've got the charming and fascinating um, Bobby Holsinger here with us today. So she's going to be back with more stuff and more interesting things on her life right after this little break. Hi, and welcome back to ETV Power Women. Uh, we're here with the lovely Wendy Holsinger. I wanted to ask you about your race car driving <laughs> because I was reading that about you and I thought, my gosh, how fascinating. How did you get into that and where? Was it here in, in Sri Lanka? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, most people don't know that my father was Scottish. Right. Okay. And he was uh, by profession an engineer. Okay. Uh, and he used to race cars in England. Okay, wow. Uh, when he came here after the war was over and I was born yeah uh, he had an mg right okay which i loved beautiful car. Lovely. yeah <laughs> and i got into this car it was parked in the driveway yeah and at four years old i got into the car <laughs> let off the handbrake and the car of course rolled <laughs> into the veranda and there was this scream from my mother yeah and my father was delighted <laughs> but mommy was absolutely <laughs> horrified yeah. and uh, i started driving when i was <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. And by the time I was 13, I was driving my mother around Colombo. <laughs> Without a license, I presume. <laughs> no license. But, but uh, at that time, the cops were not so strict. Like they are today. Like they are today. <laughs> and uh, uh, then, how did I, uh, my f a friend of mine, Jay Lianagay, yeah. who uh, noticed that I was a good driver, uh -huh. he said, well, why don't you like to take part in a rally? <laughs> And I said, yeah, I would love to. Yeah. And uh, that started it off, actually. Oh, my goodness. I think that's just amazing. Yes. But I, I also wanted to ask you, I think everyone, well, most of the people I know refer to you as Auntie Bundle. And I was wondering how this name sort of arose. You really want to know. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, okay. It's, it's, it's very unusual. Okay. Well, that's um, great. My mother had a beautiful little terrier, okay. a dog. Right. right. Yeah called Bundle, okay. <laughs> who used to sit in her basket and ride with her when she went on her bicycle yeah. uh, because she established school in 1940, yeah. which is eight years before I was born. Right. And uh, the, she took this little dog with her everywhere she went. Okay. The dog died <laughs> and soon after yeah. I came along and she looked at me and she said, ah, this is my second Bundle. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm named after a dog, <laughs> my pet name. <laughs> well, that's a really lovely story, though. And and uh, Bundle was, went everywhere with her. Yeah. And uh, so did I. Yeah. Because I'm an only child. Yes. I have absolutely no brothers or sisters. Okay. But I didn't feel the lack of that because yeah. you know when my daddy died, yeah. and I was sent to Mathura to live with my grandparents. Yeah. Because mummy was busy establishing the, the school. school. Yeah, uh, I had three cousins in Martha Right, who they've been my brothers and sisters, oh, wonderful. and they're in Australia now. Yeah, uh, but uh, we are so close. So you had this really close childhood growing up with them. With them, uh, yes. and it must have been estate life. Must have been wonderful as well. It must Gorgeous. have been, you know. Completely... And I always go back to that country because yeah. countryside. Yeah. It, it's it's what I love and it's how I relax. Okay. Because uh, I had five acres to run around in yeah. <laughs> on my grandfather's property in Madhra. Yeah. And uh, dogs have always formed a huge part of my life. Yeah. And my grandparents didn't know half the time where I was because mm. I would take my huge, uh, he was a Labrador cross uh, great Dane uh -huh. uh, called Prince. Right, okay. And uh, we used to set off on our adventures on these five acres. Oh, wow. And with Granny used to give me sandwiches, and uh -huh. uh, I had taken a book. Uh, I loved the Famous Five. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, you know, I was one of these, you see, and um, <laughs> that was lovely. Um, and lovely memories of my childhood in Mathura. I mean, and do you think maybe it was there, maybe that you sort of developed your love for theatre and drama and sort of English and you know literature. And, oh yes, yeah. because uh, my my grandmother was. Uh, I think the first French scholar oh, really? in wow. Sri Lanka. Okay. And 
she was a teacher. Yeah. Uh, my mother's a teacher. I'm a teacher. Yeah. My children are teachers. So we have four it's generations really of teachers. teachers. And um, language, uh, you know, with my grandparents, yeah. uh, I grew up learning good English. Right. Yeah. Uh, there was never a time when they would use a swear word. Okay. Uh, and I was always taught to be very correct. Yeah. Never hurt other people's feelings. Yeah. Uh, and my grandfather would say, "Don't ever make personal remarks about yeah. people." Which I carry on to this day. And is that yes. something that you kind of pass down to your children in the school yes. as well? Yes. It's, it's one of those yes. sort of... Good, I think good yeah. manners is something which should be instilled into children at a young age. Yeah. And uh, if you have good manners, you'll get on. It'll get anywhere. you far. Yeah. It'll, it'll it gets you, you very far and you'll get on in life. I think it was my grandfather yeah. and uh, my mother yeah. who instilled this love of reading. Okay. Uh, because at 10... I was reading the full version of Amy Du Maurier's Rebecca. Oh my goodness, at 10? <laughs> yes. And then I remember my mother setting me holiday reading when I was eight of Travels with a Donkey uh, by R.L. Stevenson. Right, okay. I wish I could read it now because uh, at that time I certainly didn't appreciate it. I, I just needed to be out, you know, doing, wild, yeah, doing, doing my own thing. On your adventure with your dogs. Yes. yes. <laughs> You still have dogs today, right? You've got four yes. four dogs. Yes, I've got uh, Rocky uh -huh. Doberman. Yeah, he's in the on our property there. Right. And then uh, Tammy, my daughter, youngest daughter, Tammy has yeah. two beautiful labs. Oh wow, labs are lovely dogs. Yes. So there's yeah. good children as well. Yes. And uh, my favorite at the moment is a golden retriever called Amber. Okay. When do you have a sort of personal philosophy in life, something that you live by, um, apart from obviously the belief that you know it's important to have good manners. I mean, is there, okay. do you have a sort of personal sort of an, an ethos or yes. something? That yes, because uh, from the time, as I told you, my grandfather had a huge influence on me. Yeah. And uh, every Sunday, he would, uh, we would go to church yeah. in Mathura. Right, okay. And uh, what I learned there from the, the ladies who used to run the Sunday school yeah. has been with me all my life. Okay. I, I've... My my personal belief yeah. is in number one, spreading love. Right. Okay. Kindness. Yeah. Then I think humility. Right. Because however high you go in life, yeah, you don't forget where you started. Yeah. Because the higher you go and the more arrogant you get, the harder the fall when it comes. <laughs> so I don't believe in that. Yeah. And uh, what I truly believe in also is time because right. you have to give people time. Yeah. I'm a people person. Right, okay. <laughs> I love meeting people. Yeah. I like getting to know them. Yeah. I need to understand them. Okay. Quite often I listen a lot. Yeah. And that's half the that's half the battle, you know. Yeah. Getting is, to know people. Uh, is listening. When you're listening. When you're listening. And I listen a lot, yeah, especially to my students. <laughs> but time, time is it's something that you never get time back. Yeah, it's important to give yeah. when you have. So, that's my, really, that's what has guided me, and of course, uh, absolute belief in God. Yeah, yes, because you're very spiritual. Yes, I am and, very yeah. spiritual. I start the the my prayers. Okay, and I don't go downstairs until I my prayers. Yeah. I mean, I get telephone calls in between. I have, please excuse me, God, I've got a call coming. <laughs> but that seems to me. Yeah. I'm going to take another little break on that note. Um, but don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back with more from the lovely Wendy Holsinger. We'll see you after this break.